Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to the channel. We are back today and we're gonna be talking about some more of the finals. Now, I do have a bunch of rank tips to share with you all today that I believe will, if applied, instantly improve your game and instantly get you some more wins with you and your friends. I have put in a lot of time into this rank system. If you guys have tuned into the Twitch streams, link to that will be in the description. Over on Twitch, you guys have been showing so much love, so I do appreciate that. But yeah, we are just over ranked top 500 right now. And with the amount of time I've put in, I feel like I have a really, really good understanding. I do have five categories of tips to talk about today. Not five tips, five categories of things I want to talk about. And within those categories, I have a bunch of tips to share regarding the subject at hand. So we're going to get straight into it. I hope you guys enjoy. If you guys do enjoy, a like rating on the video is always appreciated. And thanks to all the new subscribers who have been joining the channel. So let's do this. We're going to get the first and most obvious category out of the way, but I definitely think it's one I need to talk about. And that is the teammate situation. I played a lot of Apex Legends before I played the final and I feel like as time goes on more and more people seem to think that you can play team games in a competitive setting solo and get away with it and that's just not the case I really do feel like maybe the top percentile of players can have some moments where they can really shine but even those people will struggle against people who are using teamwork to their advantage because it's a teamwork game it's like trying to play football without team it's, it's just it's impossible the first point i want to touch on is solo versus with friends i think that solo can be viable if you are turning on your mic to communicate it's probably the only way you can actually find any success doing it solo but i do highly recommend joining some lfg discords uh there's a finals discord an official finals discord where you can go looking for teammates in there and just being able to find people who are in a like-minded mindset as you are is going to be re really beneficial you're all wanting to win you're all going to communicate you're all going to you know take that extra step to play together another big reason why i feel like playing with teammates that you are able to communicate with or party up with is so important is because in the finals there's so many different gadgets and specializations i think it's really important to synergize loadouts around each other i mean if you're both rocking jump pads you're both rocking double mobility it's kind of pointless because then you're double stacking utility and losing out on other utility that's going to really benefit you in maybe some defensive situations so synergizing your loadouts making sure you're a well-balanced squad that's going to be capable of more than one scenario is very important obviously the communication aspect once again uh, is something i really stress and a lot of people think of communication on a very basic level but with the amount of teamwork that's at play in the finals you know people don't account for communication when it's the final five seconds of the game and you got to jump on a cash out you need one guy to grab the cash you need one guy to heal pump the guy stealing and you need the third guy to mesh shield uh, as a heavy and body block all at the same time that's just not happening if you're not communicating and using your words that will never happen with random teammates so yeah make sure you are using your mics and the last point i have regarding the teammate situation is just overall playing together i feel like the finals is very teamwork based and just like apex legends I mean, if you're not playing tight you're not holding cash outs tight together you're not holding hands while fighting and team shotting people you're very easily going to get picked off i think that uh, the finals is one of the most teamwork intensive games i think i've ever played so i really do enjoy it for that aspect but you definitely got to make sure you are playing properly if you want to see success so yeah that does wrap up my first category of tips surrounding the teammate situation i hope that helps you out i think there's some useful stuff in there but we're going to move on to category number two which is just talking about the objective in the finals. This is actually one of the most important categories I'm gonna talk about today because I can't tell you the amount of times that people we go against or just other teams in the lobby get caught up in pointless and endless amounts of combat that doesn't serve any actual purpose to winning the game. Especially off the start of matches when you're going for the 10k vaults, I notice so many teams get caught up in the first team they engage with. One of the other teams will install their 10k. By the time you've lost half of the first vault, you now have to double stagger the second 10k or go play for the third one. And it's just a lot of wasted opportunity. So staying focused, making sure that if you are fighting, it's intentional. You either need to go through them to get to your cash site, to get your cash vault, but you're not just fighting for the sake of fighting. And especially at the start of games, when you get wipes, they don't actually have have any real impact on the game you lose about 30 percent of your cash when you do get team wiped and when you're dealing with no cash if you get wiped i mean you're still dealing with no cash so it doesn't serve you anything i definitely think that in the finals being first always pays off when you get that first 10k install at the start of a game and get that first cash out going a lot of teams 
who aren't playing disciplined will end up fighting and you'll pretty much get a free cash out if the lobby is undisciplined. A lot of times too, if you get that first 10K, the other teams will battle over that second 10K and try to get that installed. And that'll give you free opportunities to play for some of the most important vaults in the game, which is the 15Ks. If they are fighting over the second 10K still, you'll be able to go and get a free vault. You'll be able to go get a free cash out and you'll be able to get a free setup to defend that cash out and defend properly. And it just kind of snowball effects throughout the whole game. Once you get that 15, obviously the 15 is always gonna go contested. You're gonna have to fight at some point. In the rare case, you might not, but a lot of times if you get that 15K secured, it gives you the first chance to play on those 22 vaults, which can be the real tone setters in a game. If you can get to the cash vault first, you're able to defend it if need be, or you can get the jump to get that install. Just because I've written down here, I'm gonna say it again, but I'm gonna emphasize that cash is the only thing that wins. Cash is priority. Nothing else is going to get you to that next round closer to the finals, but it does tie nicely into the conversation of team wipes because like I said at the beginning of a game, getting team wipes does not matter. It's it's not really, you know, beneficial to you in, in any sense, but as the game goes on, team wipes can now start to be beneficial because you are dealing with money. Every time a team gets wiped, they lose about 30% of their cash. So if you do have a team that's a little bit above you in second place and you're in third place, getting that team wipe can gouge a big chunk of their cash off and escalate you up. If you aren't able to play for the cash vault, if another team is defending it and you wanna go searching for the team ab above you in second, that, that's the only justifiable time I think you should play for team wipes. And so yeah, that is everything surrounding the objective. I think if you focus on those key tips, I think it'll, it'll provide you a lot more success and keep your games much clearer and well-focused. The third subject I wanted to talk about in the final that I have a bunch of tips for. When, when do you install cash? When should you not install cash? When should you defend cash? Uh, I think that the 10Ks are always something you want to install. 10Ks are something you should be focused off uh, right from the beginning of the game. I used to think that playing for wipes off the beginning is a free way to get a little bit of extra cash, but the 10K just sets up the tone for the rest of the match to go so much smoother. So definitely go rush. Uh, do whatever you can to get out of the fight and just get that first 10k installed and defend it. It should be a pretty, pretty easy set, like I said, because other teams play pretty undisciplined. And the only time I ever really recommend double installing is if you notice, specifically at the start of these games, because there is so much chaos, uh, sometimes teams will let, uh, leave the other 10Ks undefended. And if you do have an opportunity within the last, let's say 30 seconds to 40 seconds of your vault to go and grab that cash and run it back to yours to quickly double stack it and get a free 20K, that can really just change the tides of, of a game like drastically so that's the only time i really recommend double stacking double stacking isn't always a great idea because it sets the whole lobby's focus on you all respawns will happen right outside your building or cash site and just it's asking for chaos so i don't i don't recommend it often what about the 15ks though let's talk about the third and fourth vaults that will spawn on the maps i think the 15ks are something they, I would argue you never want to double stack these things. Like I said, unless you have the opportunity and the lobby's just fragging out to get a free last second double stack, go for it. But 15Ks, ideally, you keep everybody away. You keep the focus off of you because those are the game securing vaults, especially if you've secured the first 10K. You want to be as quiet, discreet, and as easy of a defend as possible. I think that if you played the game properly, you got the first 10K installed, you get the 15K installed, it'll set you up for success to deal with the 22s. And the 22s are probably the most complicated vaults in the entire game. A lot of times when you're in first place or second place, you never ever want to install these vaults. But there are two that spawn around the map and depending on when the 15Ks got installed, they'll kind of stagger when they come into play. I think that if you're in first or second place, you always want to go to vault five or vault six and sit on it and defend it. You wanna make sure other teams aren't able to start these vaults or if you've already started them, you just wanna defend the cash box if you wanted the extra little bit of cash. Um, you wanna make sure that teams don't get these into the cash outs because then that'll extend the game by another 60 seconds and set it into overtime. If you're in first place, this doesn't matter too, too much because obviously you're in first place, the second place team will get knocked out. But what you do wanna make sure is that if there are some high contending fourth and third places, that both of these 22K vaults don't get put into separate cash outs. Sometimes if both the 22K vaults are in play, going to the cash out can be a smarter idea. Going to the cash out and grouping up the actual box to make sure they can't stick the cash in is a surefire way to make sure that, you know, anybody who comes to actually install 
won't extend the game. That's another really good strategy. So those are a few tips regarding every single vault in the game from the first and second vaults to the third and fourth and the five, fifth and sixth. I think if you apply those little mental strategies to every series of the game, I think it'll provide you a lot more success. We're gonna move on to subject number four and that is regarding the scoreboard. I think the scoreboard is a really powerful and underutilized tool that not many people really look at when they first start playing the finals. When I say scoreboard, I'm talking about when you hold tab and you actually open up your, your kill log to see how many kills, coins, and you know support score you have. But also the top left of your screen, there's a little bit of UI that tells you what place you're in. This will also tell you the timers on respawn cooldowns. Information that the scoreboard does give you though are what teams are fighting. A lot of times you can look at the player names and if there's anybody dead, there will be a death skull next to them. And it can give you information on if you want a third party sites, if you want to take on a fair 3v3 uh, you know, fight with a solo team at another cash site, it just gives you a lot of information. This other tip also kind of ties into the objective. And if you know a team is about to respawn and you're running a cash vault into a cash box, if they are in the final three to 10 seconds of respawning, sometimes it can be really beneficial to actually wait until they respawn before you put your cash vault into the cash box. If you put the cash vault into the cash box and they respawn within the next five seconds, chances are they're gonna be right on you, which is just gonna bring a lot more chaos in your direction and essentially ruin your chances of getting the money. So if you do wait until they do respawn, nine times out of 10, they will spawn them almost halfway across the map. And then you can put the cash box in and basically buy a free quarter of time off your cash box for free. Right away, you just don't have to worry about fighting. And the final way I think the scoreboard can be really useful for information is when you are in those capitalized first place positions at the end of games. If you are dealing with a really, really good second place team, well, chances are if a 22K vault is in play, you can use the scoreboard to your advantage to help a third or fourth place team who maybe isn't as good, get a free steal off your second place team to then qualify to the next round and knock out a really good team. The finals is a very manipulative game and you know, killing isn't always the main priority, but in the case you could pull up to a cash out where a third or fourth place team has some big money that can knock second place out and you could sort of fight with them and pick and choose who you're shooting at, you can really screw over a good team. Even some of the best teams I've gone against who are top 100 have been knocked out due to these strategies. So definitely implement this in your game. The fifth and final subject I want to talk about in the finals that I think is really important is the use of tokens. You guys all know we have finals tokens. You start off with, I think about two at the, at the first round and every round that you qualify, you end up getting one more token. I'm pretty sure there is a little bit of a bug right now. I don't recommend you uh, abuse this, but uh, I have noticed that when you disconnect from games, like let's say your game crashed off the start of a tournament and you got to reconnect. I found myself getting a full five tokens after reconnecting. So I don't know if that's intentional. I have no idea why it does that, but I did notice that. So if you do end up disconnecting, I mean, at least you get compensated for a little bit, but the, the use of coins is, is really strategic. You want to make sure you're not spamming these things because they are most useful in the final rounds. If you do go into a final round uh, with let's say one or two tokens, teams will definitely abuse you and pull off weird strats to make sure that teammates can't get back to you to revive you if you do have zero coins. So you wanna make sure you go in with at least three. I think the number one time you should coin is when your statues are being camped. Let's say you have a teammate who finished off a cash site, we got the money, and there's a team who is just hard stuck on wanting to fight your last final teammate. A lot of times I think it's more beneficial for the teammate to just run away, make sure you don't get wiped, make sure you're not gonna lose 30% of your cash. And upon him running away, you and your teammate can use coins to then relink up with him and go push the next cash fault. In that downtime, your teammate who is still alive can go push the next cash fault or push the next cash site that you wanna actually go attack. It's just about using up your time efficiently to make sure there isn't serious amounts of downtime where you're losing opportunity. Another fantastic time I think you should be using your coins is if you have a great setup uh, with a lot of defensive utility on a cash out. If your teams are not in an uncomfortable situation by any means and you happen to get picked off outside a building, your two teammates can just keep holding down the cash site, defending it, holding off the team and let 20 seconds run by and you can coin back and rejoin them in the fight rather than them giving up fantastic positioning, a uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic hold on the cash site and ultimately end up giving up the cash, which could then just lead to you getting third party from another team respawning. I 
the end of the day, time is money in the finals. And if you can buy some time for free and the coin is a good way to do that, then you should utilize it in that sense. Another fantastic time, I think you should use the token. That is a bit more of an advanced strategy, but let's say you are in the position of first and you do want two teammates to go and grief the remaining cash site to manipulate score standings and maybe knock out second place. I think that it's always beneficial to have one teammate kind of sit behind and rat to make sure that you do not take team wipe to knock yourself into second place and then potentially get knocked out by the cash out that's currently in play. Um, if your two teammates who do go to grief end up getting knocked out and you do have a final teammate who is ratting to stay alive to make sure you don't get wiped running around and making sure that you have your finger on the space bar is you know really beneficial so that if anybody does last second chance manage to find him you can coin he'll die you'll respawn and you avoid the team wipe you keep your positioning everything is good but if you do have the luxury you won't have to burn that token your teammate can just rat and you'll stay dead until the next round and you won't end up burning a coin and to finish this entire tip video off i wanted to finish with a tip on when i don't think you should be using coin in certain situations i think that if you're in a final round and you and your teammate have been wiped and it's your final third teammate fighting for his life and he's about to die coining back in doesn't actually provide you any value It'd be much more beneficial to just take the team wipe so your whole team can come back after 20 seconds and then regroup together you coining in at the last second right as your final teammate dies only extends a dead situation you're now back you're still the last one alive and chances are if they have recon they're gonna hunt you down and kill you too and i've seen bad teams chain this on for three to four lives i then go in i'll die my teammate coins back he runs in solo he dies another one comes back it's just it's a bad loop so sometimes playing for wipe is more important the only times i recommend that maybe you do coin is if you're in qualifying rounds and you don't want to take the wipe because you will lose cash that could be a beneficial time to use your coin but in the final rounds you don't lose anything for getting full team wipe so playing to the time of the game is much more important and i think that that's uh five categories of tips uh, I don't know how many tips were in there, but that was a free load of tips. And I hope they help you out. I hope they uh, instantly get you better at ranked, instantly get you some more wins and help you out. So if you guys enjoyed the video, a like is always appreciated. Uh, subscribe if you guys do want to see more. We do post a lot of finals videos and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, I stream every day on Twitch. I hope to see you guys over there. I do appreciate all the support you guys have been showing on the streams. Uh, link to that is in the description once again, but I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Keep up, stay up. Peace out.